Human Body, Part 4, by Henry Gray. The Hindbrain, Part 1. The Encephalon, or Brain. General Considerations and Divisions. The brain is contained within the cranium and constitutes the upper, greatly expanded part of the central nervous system. In its early embryonic condition, it consists of three hollow vesicles termed the hindbrained or rhombencephalon, the midbrain or mesencephalon, and the forebrain or prosencephalon. And the parts derived from each of these can be recognized in the adult. Thus, in the process of development, the wall of the hindbrain undergoes modification to form the medulla oblongata, the pons and cerebellum, while its cavity is expanded to form the fourth ventricle. The midbrain forms only a small part of the adult brain. Its cavity becomes the cerebral aqueduct, aqueduct of Sylvius, which serves as a tubular communication between the third and fourth ventricles, while its walls are thickened to form the corpora quadrigemina and cerebral peduncles. The forebrain undergoes great modifications. Its anterior part, or telencephalon, expands laterally in the form of two hollow vesicles, the cavities of which become the lateral ventricles while the surrounding walls form the cerebral hemispheres and their commissures. The cavity of the posterior part, or diencephalon, forms the greater part of the third ventricle, and from its walls are developed most of the structures which bound that cavity. The hindbrain, or rhomencephalon. The hindbrain, or rhomencephalon, occupies the posterior fossa of the cranial cavity and lies below a fold of dura mater than tentorium cerebelli. It consists of A, the myelencephalon, comprising the medulla oblongata and the lower part of the fourth ventricle, B, the metencephalon, consisting of the pons, cerebellum, and the intermediate part of the fourth ventricle, and C, the isthmus rhombencephali, a constricted portion immediately adjoining the midbrain and including the superior peduncles of the cerebellum, the anterior medullary vellum, and the upper part of the fourth ventricle. The medulla oblongata, spinal bulb. The medulla oblongata extends from the lower margin of the pons to a plane passing transversely below the pyramidal decussation and above the first pair of cervical nerves. This plane corresponds with the upper border of the atlas behind and the middle of the odontoid process of the axis in front. At this level, the medulla oblongata is continuous with the medulla spinalis. Its anterior surface is separated from the basilar part of the occipital bone and the upper part of the odontoid process by the membranes of the brain and the occipital axial ligaments. Its posterior surface is received into the fossa between the hemispheres of the cerebellum and the upper portion of it forms the lower part of the floor of the fourth ventricle. The medulla oblongata is pyramidal in shape, its broad extremity being directed upwards towards the pons while its narrow lower end is continuous with the medulla spinalis. It measures about 3 centimeters in length, about 2 centimeters in breadth at its widest part, and about 1.25 centimeters in thickness. The central canal of the medulla spinalis is prolonged into its lower half and then opens into the cavity of the fourth ventricle. The medulla oblongata may therefore be divided into a lower closed part containing the central canal and an upper open part corresponding with the lower portion of the fourth ventricle. The anterior median fissure, fissura mediana anterior, ventral or ventral median fissure, contains a fold of pia mater and extends along the entire length of the medulla oblongata. It ends at the lower border of the pons in a small triangular expansion termed the foramen cecum. Its lower part is interrupted by bundles of fibers which cross obliquely from one side to the other and constitute the pyramidal decussation. Some fibers, termed the anterior external arcuate fibers, emerge from the fissure above this decussation and curve lateralward and upward over the surface of the medulla oblongata to join the inferior peduncle. The posterior median fissure, fissura mediana posterior, dorsal or dorsal medial fissure, is a narrow groove and exists only in the closed part of the medulla oblongata. It becomes gradually shower from below upward and finally ends about the middle of the medulla oblongata where the central canal expands into the cavity of the fourth ventricle. These two fissures divide the closed part of the medulla oblongata into symmetrical halves, each presenting elongated eminences which, on the surface view, 
are continuous with the funiculi of the medulla spinalis. In the open part, the halves are separated by the anterior median fissure and by a median raphe, which extends from the bottom of the fissure to the floor of the fourth ventricle. Further, certain of the cranial nerves pass through the substance of the medulla oblongata and are attached to its surface in series with the roots of the spinal nerves. Thus, the fibers of the hypoglossal nerve represent the upward continuation of the anterior nerve roots and emerge in linear series from a furrow termed the anterior lateral sulcus. Similarly, the accessory, vagus, and glossopharyngeal nerves correspond with the posterior nerve roots and are attached to the bottom of a sulcus named the posterior lateral sulcus. Advantage is taken of this arrangement to subdivide each half of the medulla oblongata into three districts, anterior, middle, and posterior. Although these three districts appear to be directly continuous with the corresponding funiculi of the medulla spinalis, they do not necessarily contain the same fibers, since some of the fasciculi of the medulla spinalis end in the medulla oblongata, while others alter their course in passing through it. The anterior district is named the pyramid, pyramis medulla oblongata, and lies between the anterior median fissure and the anterior lateral sulcus. Its upper end is slightly constricted, and between it and the pons the fibers of the abducent nerve emerge. A little below the pons, it becomes enlarged and prominent, and finally tapers into the anterior funiculus of the medulla spinalis, with which, at first sight, it appears to be directly continuous. The two pyramids contain the motor fibers, which pass from the brain to the medulla oblongata and medulla spinalis, cortical bulbar, and cortical spinal fibers. When these pyramidal fibers are traced downward, it is found that some two-thirds or more of them leave the pyramids in successive bundles and decussate in the anterior median fissure, forming what is termed the pyramidal decussation. Having crossed the middle line, they pass down in the posterior part of the lateral funiculus as the lateral cerebrospinal fasciculus. The remaining fibers, that is, those which occupy the lateral part of the pyramid, do not cross the middle line, but are carried downward as the anterior cerebrospinal fasciculus into the anterior funiculus of the same side. The greater part of the anterior proper fasciculus of the medulla spinalis is continued upward through the medulla oblongata under the name of the medial longitudinal fasciculus. The lateral district is limited in front by the anterior lateral sulcus and the roots of the hypoglossal nerve, and behind by the posterior lateral sulcus and the roots of the accessory, vagus, and glossopharyngeal nerves. Its upper part consists of a prominent oval mass, which is named the olive, while its lower part is of the same width as the lateral funiculus of the medulla spinalis and appears on the surface to be a direct continuation of it. As a matter of fact, only a portion of the lateral funiculus is continued upward into this district. For the lateral cerebrospinal fasciculus passes into the pyramid of the opposite side and the dorsal spinocerebellar fasciculus is carried into the inferior peduncle in the posterior district. The ventral spinocerebellar fasciculus is continued upward on the lateral surface of the medulla oblongata in the same relative position it occupies in the spinal cord until it passes under cover of the external arcuate fibers. It passes beneath these fibers, just dorsal to the olive and ventral to the roots of the vagus and glossopharyngeal nerves. It continues upward through the pons along the dorsolateral edge of the lateral lemniscus. The remainder of the lateral funiculus consists chiefly of the lateral proper fasciculus. Most of these fibers dip beneath the olive and disappear from the surface, but a small strand remains superficial to the olive. In a depression at the upper end of this strand is the acoustic nerve. The olive, oliva, olivary body, is situated lateral to the pyramid from which it is separated by the anterior lateral sulcus and the fibers of the hypoglossal nerve. Behind, it is separated from the posterior lateral sulcus by the ventral spinocerebellar fasciculus. In the depression between the upper end of the olive and the pons lies the acoustic nerve. It measures about 1.25 centimeters in length, and between its upper end and the pons, there is a slight depression to which the roots of the facial nerve are attached. The external arcuate fibers wind across the lower part of the pyramid and olive and enter the inferior peduncle. The posterior district lies behind the posterior lateral sulcus and the roots of the accessory, vagus, and glossopharyngeal nerves, and, like the lateral district, is divisible into a lower and an upper portion. The lower part is limited behind by the posterior median fissure 
and consists of the fasciculus gracilis and the fasciculus cuneatus. The fasciculus gracilis is placed parallel to and along the side of the posterior median fissure and separated from the fasciculus cuneatus by the posterior intermediate sulcus and septum. The gracil and cuneate fasciculi are at first vertical in direction, but at the lower part of the rhomboid fossa they diverge from the middle line in a V-shaped manner and each presents an elongated swelling. That on the fasciculus gracilis is named the clava and is produced by its subjacent nucleus of gray matter, the nucleus gracilis. That on the fasciculus cuneatus is termed the cuneate tubercle and is likewise caused by a gray nucleus named the nucleus cuneatus. The fibers of these fasciculi terminate by arborizing around the cells in their respective nuclei. A third elevation, produced by the substantia gelatinosus of Rolando, is present in the lower part of the posterior district of the medulla oblongata. It lies on the lateral aspect of the fasciculus cuneatus and is separated from the surface of the medulla oblongata by a band of nerve fibers which form the spinal tract, spinal root, of the trigeminal nerve. Narrow below, this elevation gradually expands above and ends about 1.25 centimeters below the pons in a tubercle, the tubercle of Rolando, tuber sinerium. The upper part of the posterior district of the medulla oblongata is occupied by the inferior peduncle, a thick rope-like strand situated between the lower part of the fourth ventricle and the roots of the glossopharyngeal and vagus nerves. The inferior peduncles connect the medulla spinalis and medulla oblongata with the cerebellum and are sometimes named the restiform bodies. As they pass upward, they diverge from each other and assist in forming the lower part of the lateral boundaries of the fourth ventricle. Higher up, they are directed backwards, each passing to the corresponding cerebellar hemisphere. Near their entrance into the cerebellum, they are crossed by several strands of fibers which run to the median sulcus of the rhomboid fossa and are named the stria medullaris. The inferior peduncle appears to be the upward continuation of the fasciculus gracilis and fasciculus cuneatus, 